What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create some cool, furry, and fun text effects in Photoshop. So today we are going to be creating a furry typography effect in Photoshop. So the first thing we're going to do once we launch the program is go ahead and click on new to create a new document. And let's start off by just giving our file a name over here and we'll call it furry type. Set the width to about 1940 pixels by 1080 tall, a resolution of 300 pixels per inch, RGB color mode, and you can set the background contents to black and then go ahead and click on create to make your new document. Now what I like to do is kind of start off by bringing in some photos and I'll usually convert them to smart objects once I open them up and then drag them into my document. But there's actually an easier way to do this that I wanted to show you guys. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I went ahead and just downloaded some cool fur patterns, but you guys can get some free ones from a site like Vexels or even DeviantArt has some cool ones there too. But once you're ready to import your image, come up to the file menu and then you're gonna come down here to where it says place embedded and click. Now go ahead and navigate to your photo and then just choose the option down here to place it and it's going to bring in your, your image here right into your document. Now before I hit enter or return to apply these changes, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit and then hold down the alt option and shift keys and drag outwards from the center. And that's going to help me scale this image up so that I can place my texture here. Now, once you're happy with the size and placement, go ahead and hit return. And you'll notice over here in your layers palette that it's actually already been turned into a smart object. So it's basically, you know, kind of just saving you a little bit of time, saving you a couple of steps when you're importing your images and you want to make them smart objects. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys that quick tip right off the bat. So from here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new layer, which you can do by pressing Command, Alt, Option, Shift, and N on the keyboard or you can just press the new layer icon over here at the bottom of your layers palette. Now from there, make sure that you have white as your foreground color because we wanna make sure that our text shows up. So press T to get your type tool, click over here, and I'm just going to type out the word Safari. And for the font here, I decided to use something a little bit different. I mean, if you guys have seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm quite fond of using Sign Painter, and there's a handful of other scripts that I kinda like to use, but this is a nice one that I'm just trying trying out for the first time, but it's totally free. It's called Tasty Sushi, and you guys can download that from defont.com. So what I'm doing here is just typing out my text, kind of scaling it up so that it's about the same width as my texture that I want to use. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to use our text as a mask. So let me show you what I mean. If I come over here to my layers palette and I hold down the command key or control if you're on a PC, you'll see that I'm getting this little icon. It's like a white box with a broken line around it. And that's just telling me that if I click, I'll activate a selection around the text. So once you do that and you have a selection, go ahead and poke out the eyeball just to turn off the visibility for that layer. Select your smart object layer, and then come down here to the bottom of your layers palette and choose the add layer mask icon. Now you can see what that does. It basically just creates a mask using our text so that the only place you can see this image or texture is inside of there. The basic idea or the basic trick to this is using your brushes. Now, if I press B on the keyboard to get my brush tool and then press F5 to bring up my brushes panel, you guys can see your brushes here. Now, I've already got mine set up because I was just kind of experimenting with it a little bit before I began this video, but all I'm doing here is using the default dune grass brush here in Photoshop. And you'll see if I click on that, what that looks like. And this is actually the same exact brush that I used in a tutorial a while ago for creating realistic facial hair in Photoshop. But it's all about the parameters and the way that you use these brushes. So you gotta get a little bit creative with it. So the first thing that you wanna do once you select this brush is just increase the spacing, maybe somewhere between 25 and 30%. All right, and you can also play around with the angle and that's just going to rotate the brush. All right, so once you do that, you can come down here to Shape Dynamics I've cranked up the size jitter and also turned the angle jitter up to about 18%. And you can kind of see what that's doing as I move the slider around. We want it to look somewhat random, so that's the reason why I've increased that setting. 
and then come to the next one here for scattering and you want to check off the option that says both axes and then turn it up to somewhere around 42 percent. Now the last option that you want to check out here is the count. Now if I move up the count it's basically like the controlling the density of the hair here or the, the grass brush that we've got. So if I turn it up pretty high you can see it creates a very dense effect. So let's go ahead and try maybe something around six or seven. And once you've done that, go ahead and click up here to close out of that tab. Now, as long as I have a solid white color selected and I'm in my layer mask over here, I can just begin to brush and you'll see that it's, you know, kind of revealing some of that texture. So, you know, the normal way to do it would be to kind of come in here and manually, you know, brush around all of these letters, which you can totally do and that's fine, but it's going to take a little bit of time and patience because you're going to want to you know, try to get it pretty accurate and pretty close to your letters. So let me show you guys an even better way to do this. So what we're going to do is come back over here to the palette, hold down the command key once again to kind of get this, you know, box with a broken line around it, and that's just going to activate a selection around our text. Now this time what we're going to do is come over here to the paths tab, click on this little hamburger menu in the top right, and then choose make work path. You can leave the tolerance set to one and click OK. And that's basically just created a path around our text. Now the cool thing about that is if I come over here to my layers palette, select my layer mask, and then press P on the keyboard to get my pen tool, I can now click anywhere along this path and that's going to reveal this menu. Now once you see this drop down menu here, go ahead and choose this option that says stroke path. All right, and once you've done that, you can choose from all of these tools here, but the main one that we're gonna be working with again is the brush. Okay, so make sure you have brush selected under the tool and check off the simulate pressure option here and then hit OK. And you can see what that's done. That's basically just, you know, used our brush around this entire path around all of our text here. But the only problem is, is that it's a little bit big. So I'm going to come back and just undo that really quickly. Press B to get my brush tool. And you can see the size of my brush right here is set to about 80. So I'm going to turn that down a bit, maybe to around 50 or so. And then let's try it again. Press P to get the pen, hold down control and click anywhere along the path, and then choose the stroke path option. Brush and simulate pressure are both selected and hit OK. So now we're getting the same effect with a smaller brush and it looks pretty good and it saves you a lot of time. All right, so what I wanna do is press B again on the keyboard. I'm gonna make the brush even a little bit smaller this time, maybe around 40%. Press F5 to bring up my brush panel. And this time let's lower the count to maybe around five. Come up here to the brush tip shape and then let's just go ahead and rotate it a little bit just to you know add some variation. All right, and then go ahead and close out. Press P to get the pen, hold down control and click along the path and do the same thing again. Just go ahead and hit okay. And it's going to make its way around all of the text once again with a smaller brush. Now once you're happy with it, just go ahead and press the enter key and that's going to basically just hide your path. Now if there's any areas that you want to come in and modify manually, you can feel free to do that. You can come in here and you can paint in some extra hairs in some spots just to add a little more variation if you want. Or you can switch to a solid black color and paint out some areas where it's looking a little too dense or where you don't want any hair to appear. But that's the basic effect and that's kind of how you get that look going. And just with a few simple steps, it's already looking pretty cool. The next thing I want to do is add a background color. So I'm going to select the background here, come down to the bottom of my layers palette, and choose this circle here that looks like a half black, half white circle, and that's the adjustment layer icon. And then come up here to where it says solid color all the way at the top. Now I can try out some different colors here in the background and kind of see how that looks, just to you know experiment with some different options here. Okay, so you can try out some other colors. Maybe this kind of bluish green color looks cool. And the hex value for that is 487860. Go ahead and hit OK. And the nice thing about using an adjustment layer is that you can change this at any time just by double clicking it and selecting a new color. So the next thing I'm going to do is create another new layer above that one. Press G on the keyboard to get my gradient tool. And up top here, make sure that you have your second option selected, which is a radial gradient. And for the gradient itself, just click on it and make sure that you have a gradient that fades from solid to transparent. Go ahead and hit OK. And 
what I'm going to do then is just click roughly in the center of the image and click and drag outwards. And that's just going to create my radial gradient emanating from the center. Now I'm going to make it a little bit larger, hold down Alt, Option, and Shift, and scale it up a bit, and then change the blending mode of that layer to Overlay. And then you can lower the opacity a bit, maybe to around 70, just by pressing the number 7 on your keyboard. Now let's go ahead and add one more layer. Press G to get your gradient tool once again. But this time we're going to check off this box here that says Reverse. And that's going to reverse our radial gradient. Now for the color, I'm going to hold down the Alt Option key, and that's going to toggle my eyedropper tool. And I'm going to select some of this greenish blue background color here. And now again, click roughly in the center and click and drag outwards from any of the four corners. Okay, and that's going to create a vignette around our image. The problem is because it's the same color, you can't really tell the difference right now. But if we go and change the blending mode from normal to let's say multiply, now you can see that effect really taking place. So again, for this, I'm gonna lower the opacity a little bit because it's a little too intense. And I'm gonna set it to maybe around 30%. Okay, so now we have a couple of background layers here. We've got some colors that really kind of helps our text stand out. And instead of going in and changing the color of the vignette layer, the overlay, and the color fill, what we can do now is come back down to our adjustment layer icon and choose the hue saturation option. And now just by moving around the hue slider, you can change the color of the entire background all at once. Something like that looks pretty cool. And now what I want to do is just double click on this background layer press OK to unlock it, and then I can just remove it. I'm going to select the background color fill layer, hold the shift key and select the hue saturation adjustment layer, and then press command G to put it into a group folder. Double click on group one and change the name of the folder to background. Now what I want to do next is basically select my text and my uh, smart object layer here with the furry texture. Select both of those layers while holding shift, press command G, and put that into a folder called text. Now if I expand that folder, you'll see I've got my layers in here, but what we want to do now is kind of click on this link between the layer and the mask, and that's going to unlink these. So if I press V to get my move tool, I can now move the texture around without affecting my type. All right, and that's pretty nice because if I wanted to see what some of these other textures look like in here, I can do that very easily just on the fly. But the problem is that some of these textures are a little bit smaller than the one we were using before. So if you do like one of these, you'll just have to zoom out, press Command T to do a free transform, and then hold down Alt, Option, and Shift again to scale the image from the center and make it a bit larger, just so that it fills out all of your text. Now this other texture here I think looks pretty cool. You may want to use that one or feel free to you know, try out any of these others. And let's just you know take a look and see how some of these look. Okay, now one other thing that you guys can do here to make this, you know, push it even further is to apply some layer style adjustments. All right, so I'm just going to go back to my original kind of texture here, zoom out, maybe rotate it a little bit. All right, something like that. Looks pretty cool. Okay, and let's go ahead and apply some layer styles to this. So remember to link the layer and the mask back together. And then go ahead and double click on the layer to bring up the layer style options. And let's go ahead and apply an inner glow with a solid white color and a blending mode of overlay. All right, and I'm just gonna turn that up a bit and have it you know, kind of brighten up the edges here. All right, for the size, I'm using around, let's say something around 28 or so with an opacity of around 50. You know, play around with it and see how it looks. And then you can also turn on and off the preview option here just to see the effect that it has. But it helps to kind of brighten up the edges, especially you know creating some contrast around the dark background here from the vignette. And then let's go ahead and also apply an inner shadow. And for this, I'm using a blending mode of soft light, a fill color of solid black with an opacity of maybe around 74 or so. And I have a distance of six, a choke of 10 and a size of 10 selected there as well. All right, but again, if you want to preview it, just turn that on and off and you can kind of see how it helps create a little bit more depth with our text. But of course, you know, you guys can feel free to play around with this and you can always come back in here and change up the settings. So I actually just changed the size to about 29% here. 
And then once you're happy with it, go ahead and click OK. All right, so that's the basic idea. And if you guys want to push it even further, what you can do is apply an adjustment layer to a group folder. So hold down the Alt Option key and click on the adjustment layer icon here at the bottom of the layers palette. And now let's go ahead and apply a hue saturation adjustment layer to the group folder. But because I held down the Alt Option key before I clicked on the adjustment layer icon, I'm getting this option here. And what this is going to allow me to do is to use the previous layer to create a clipping mask. All right, now go ahead and hit OK. And you'll notice this little arrow here that's just on top of our folder. And that means that as I change this, it's only going to affect the contents of that folder. So it's not going to change the background color at all. All right, so that's one of the main benefits of using clipping masks is that you can really just target specific layers. Okay, so you can play around with this a little bit. You can try out some other adjustment layers. You can desaturate it. You can increase the saturation a bit. And I'm just going to boost this saturation up to maybe 9 or 10. And I think something like that looks pretty cool. All right, but again, I can come in here, play around with my background colors a little bit. I'm thinking, you know, the tan on tan doesn't really create as much contrast as I would like, but it's good to still show you guys how to do that because it really gives you a lot of control. And another nice thing is that I can also apply layer styles to the group folder. So with my text group folder selected, I'm just double clicking. Let's go ahead and apply a drop shadow. All right, so here I'm using a solid black set to normal for the blend mode an opacity of around 45%, and my other options here are a distance of 14 pixels, spread of 0%, and a size of 27 pixels. Go ahead and hit OK, and that just creates a nice bit of depth and separation from the background to help things stand out. So let's just take one more look here at some of our other textures once we unlink our layer mask from our layer itself and see what other ones look like here. All right, so I think this is like a like a deer texture maybe, which looks kind of interesting. But you know, you may want to, you know, rotate it or move it around. You know, and you can scale it up or down as I showed you guys before. All right? But again, I think this one is pretty interesting too. I keep coming back to this one. I kind of like this one as well. All right, but you guys can feel free to use any kind of images you want. As I mentioned in the beginning, you know, Deviant Art has a lot of cool uh, resources and photos that you guys can use. Um, you just want to make sure that you give the artist proper credit. Okay, but once you're done with it, go ahead and press enter to apply the changes. And remember to link the mask and the layer itself once again. And then you can always come back up here and play around with the saturation like I was showing you guys before and modify the colors however you want. Okay, and if you select this group folder again, come back down to the adjustment layer icon Let's say you want to choose something like curves. Now, because you had the group folder selected, it's applying a clipping mask automatically in between these two layers. So now I can, you know, play around with the curves a little bit, maybe get a little more contrast out of it or lighten it up. Pretty much whatever you guys want to do is, you know, totally possible and non-destructive in Photoshop. Okay, so there's a lot you guys can do with this. It's totally non-destructive, but you get the basic idea. It's really about using, you know, masks with a couple of brushes and some cool layer styles applied to get that depth out of it. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys, you know, a few different approaches uh, for how to do that to create some cool furry type in Photoshop. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And be sure to go ahead and sign up for our email list, guys, and get yourself the free Photoshop ebook and be the first to know anytime some new content drops for Teach Me to Design. As always, thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.